French Frances Johnson, what's your opinion on Victory Road 11 with Jeff Hardy coming to the coming uh, to face Sting High and Sting agreeing to the this is bullshit chance? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know what a, kind of opinion you would have on that. I mean, obviously it sucked. I think for everybody involved, I don't think there's anybody that thought it was a great <laughs> scenario. Uh, the good, good, the good part out of it is that uh, you know Jeff's. In a much better place now, you know, got totally uh, away from that whole vibe and whole scene, and somehow he's younger now than he was back then. So that's a that, that should be a good example to people to try to go down the path that that, that he was uh, stuck on for a while. He's he's getting younger, and me and Matt are both getting old as fuck. I think somehow he's sucking the life out of us. Cause <laughs> some comic book yeah, stuff you, going on. Yeah, if you look at him now, man, you see him at home with his wife and kids, and being you know. Uh, Really getting into the family aspect was what helped him out, man. That's all he cares about now. He takes care of his dad all the time when he's home. Um, like I said, he, I think he's done. He's about down to 26 years old now again. Uh, meanwhile, I'll, I'll be 40 in a month. So, uh, he's doing great. That's it. That's that whole scenario. That was bad for everybody involved. And, yeah. and I'm sure everybody involved wished Jeff included, especially nobody more so than Jeff wished it didn't happen. So. Or he wasn't allowed out. Yeah. Or, room, or that you know, there's gonna be. There's definitely uh, some responsibility yes. that should have been uh, placed backstage. Absolutely. Uh, if they thought he was in that condition, you know. Uh, without a doubt, though, you know, I took full responsibility for anything I did, and the, full, the first amount of responsibility goes to Jeff. You know, that was um, that was on him. Mm -hmm. But once once we're there, and you know uh, the the condition, then as, as a company, you step in. And uh, for the record, anyone involved with the company in that incident has told us he seemed fine. Yeah, and I mean, and uh, the one time I spoke with Jeff about it, and I don't harp on stuff like that, especially when you know, when my friends go through bad stuff, I don't, I don't go to get the details, mm -hmm. I don't go to get the gossip, I go to see if he's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to know where his head and his heart's at. You know, I don't need any, you know, what were you thinking? None of that bullshit. You know, but he's like, man, I would have been fine. He did tell me that. He goes, you know, I, I would have been fine. I could have finished. I would have been good. Mm -hmm. And you know. I, I have no reason in the world to believe that Jeff would lie to me. So, Salvatore M. Shane, I've always been intrigued by the shake everyone's hand part of backstage etiquette. Now, I understand how this isn't so difficult on an indie show where there isn't that many people in the locker room. However, when you work for the WWE, do you literally have to shake everyone's hand backstage? The light guys? The morning, the guys moving the boxes? I mean, normal thinking would say no. Just shake talent and relevant people's hands. But what if you're a new guy who doesn't exactly know everyone yet, and then boom, you walk past old chipmunk face Kevin Dunn, and you don't shake his hand? That may get you heat. See, I hate the fact that he used the word relevant right there, you know, because that implies that other people aren't, and I, I don't like, I don't have that attitude anyway. And I would just talk to anybody back there, you know, I mean, the young guys coming in, like, you know, you're going there to get noticed. And then they're surprised when people notice shit. You know, if you go there to get, you know, you go in there and you get noticed, keep in mind that eyes are on you at all times, even if you're not. And if they think you got a bad attitude and you're too good to go shake somebody that you might consider irrelevant, then you're going to shoot yourself in the foot because that attitude isn't going to be conducive up there anyway. You know, there's enough guys up there that could have that attitude. You know, if you're coming in as a new guy, a new guy yeah. you know, it might be better to just be pleasant. And, you know, I mean, if you want to go, you know, and I did it, I just wanted to meet the guys. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to meet The Undertaker. I wanted to meet Stone Cold. I wanted to meet all those guys. So, of course, I would go up to him and shake their hand. It was never even a business etiquette thing to me. I just wanted to meet these guys. I've been studying them, you know, uh, you know most of my career to, you know, Especially with top guys, you want to see how they got there. You want to, you know, get in their head at some point. You can't just walk up as a perfect stranger and just start interviewing them. Yeah. Although that's what we're doing right now. But yeah. uh, in that scenario, um, totally for not. money. For money. You're talking about just walking up and having, yeah, uh, an, an intense discussion in the locker room. You just say a hello and yeah. sit down in the corner kind of thing. Or yeah, just you know, I just hey, I'm, you know, I would always introduce myself and you know, the next time I see him, hey, how you guys doing? Whatever. I would walk around and do that because I mean, these are the guys that you're gonna, you know, especially if you plan to go there and get a hired. Now these are the guys that at some point your life may be in their hands. It might be a good idea to establish a rapport with them. But also I think he's kind of implying, what about TV guys, like production guys? You, I, yeah, talk to you everybody? definitely want to talk to those guys. Those are the guys that are going to make you look good. Right. But I would just see guys anyway, man. If a guy had a cool t-shirt on, I didn't care if he was there with just catering or if he was considered irrelevant by somebody. If he got a cool shirt, hey man, it's a cool shirt. Right. And I would just, if he's got common interest, you know, I would just, I'm a, you know, 
when I get in my hermit mode, I'm kind of like don't want to talk to people sometimes. But, uh, you know, 99% of the time, I'm a very outgoing person, so I never had this problem. Okay. And uh, the people that didn't want to shake hands, I'm just like, man, you might be in the wrong business because this is a people business. Right. And you're going to deal with a lot of people. So if you've got a problem communicating with people, you know, you might want to consider your options as far as a career goes. Work the night shift somewhere. Yeah. yeah. French Frances Johnson, what's your opinion on Victory Road 11 with Jeff Hardy coming to the coming uh, to face Sting High and Sting agreeing to the this is bullshit chance? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know what a, kind of opinion you would have on that. I mean, obviously it sucked, I think, for everybody involved. I don't think there's anybody that thought it was a great <laughs> scenario. Uh, the good, good, the good part out of it is that uh, you know Jeff's in a much better place now, you know, got totally uh, away from that whole vibe and whole scene and somehow he's younger now than he was back then. So that's a, that, that should be a good example to people that try to go down the path that, that, that he was uh, stuck on for a while. He's, he's getting younger and me and Matt are both getting old as fuck. I think somehow he's sucking the life out of us. Cause <laughs> Some comic book yeah, stuff you, going on. Yeah, if you look on, at him man. now, man, you see him at home with his wife and kid and being, you know, uh, Really getting into the family aspect was what helped him out, man. That's all he cares about now. He takes care of his dad all the time when he's home. Um, like I said, he, I think he's done. He's about down to 26 years old now again. Uh, meanwhile, I'll, I'll be 40 in a month. So, uh, he, he's doing great. That's it. That's that whole scenario. That was bad for everybody involved. And, yeah. and I'm sure everybody involved wished Jeff included, especially nobody more so than Jeff wished it didn't happen. So. Or he wasn't allowed out. Yeah. Or, or that there. you know, there's going to be. There's definitely uh, some responsibility yes. that should have been uh, placed backstage. Absolutely. Uh, if they thought he was in that condition, you know. Uh, without a doubt, though, you know, I took full responsibility for anything I did. And the, full, the first amount of responsibility goes to Jeff, you know. That was, um, that was on him. Mm -hmm. But once, once we're there and you know uh, the, the condition, then as, as a company you step in. And uh, For the record, anyone involved with the company in that incident has told us he seemed fine. Yeah, and I mean, and uh, the one time I spoke with Jeff 